Alright guys, so we had some memory that got lost there again. It's not bad enough that the memory runs out, but then it has to be lost, so then I have to fight with it for hours. Anyway, we're going to come back to this where we left off, which is um, we were just landing the third wire for the electronic speed control. We're going up to this 50 amp ESC from Durafly. And we've got this wire tied on. And we're going to go ahead and try to pull that through again real quick. Okay, it feels like we got a good handle on it. This servo's been released so that we have enough room to get it underneath there. I just want to avoid hitting stuff to make it easier on ourselves. I'm just kind of pulling it through. You can see it poking through there. Okay. And just being nice so we don't damage any of the other cables as we tug this through. And I didn't do myself any favors when I did this because now it's going to be challenging to release this tape. Usually I put a tail on there. So I'm just going to slide this hook forward to make it a little bit easier. Normally I have the presence of mind not to do that. Just regular conventional tape here, nothing special about that. And uh, got the hot glue gun hot still. Hours later, of course, which always makes good use of energy. Okay, so now we need to plug this into the throttle channel with the signal lead going the right direction. In this case, I'll probably go ahead and chase this. I want to try to get the cable flat so depending on which direction I end up having this ESC point which I would like to have the capacitors point forward so they can get cooled a little bit better but honestly can't necessarily say that that's for sure going to help in this application or not. So you can see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to walk, put some pressure on that cable, try to kind of overspin it Okay, so now I can just walk that spin until I get it to the position I want. Okay, so now I got it spun properly. And we're going into that that position there. <coughs> so slide it in front of this wire here. Good, so we can hang on to it properly. Just go ahead and feed it in there. Get it started. Okay, now that it's in, we should be able to pull any slack we need to at, at some point shortly here. Um, obviously, we're going to want to test this, so we need to make sure we have proper clearance for the prop. Um, just in case something goes wrong, hopefully nothing's going to go wrong, but if it does go wrong, we don't want to have a bunch of new exciting consequences. Um, also, our servo currently needs to be seated back down, so we're going to line up our two marks, our two reference marks. Um, we're going to get this thing slid back down, make sure it goes all the way into the position it was before, which it appears we are there. Then we can go ahead and get these little collars back in. Should be a pretty straightforward process. I'm going to use this screwdriver to help me aid getting those in. Just slipping them in. Okay. So now I just need to take the screwdriver 
and run the screws back in. That Chinese screwdriver doesn't work so hot on that screw. Now in this application these screws are more or less being held in by the glue anyway. So they become more of a pin, a placement locating pin for the servo and they become less of a hold. So here in a minute when I'm done with tightening these three of the four screws, um, I'm going to take and put some hot glue over this area just like it was prior to this arrangement. Okay, so we got that tight. And you can see the two red marks are aligned properly. And so we've kind of relocated that onto the servo. Grabbing the magnet so we can get this thing thread it back in. And that should mean we don't have any massive trim adjustments. And when I say massive, usually one one position worth of adjustment might be, you know, five, ten percent, something like that, worth of clicks. So you don't want to have all those clicks wasted. Okay, see how this is stuck on the side still? I'm gonna try to let's see if I can free that without causing damage to anything. I'm using a, a Phillips screwdriver instead of a flat. A flat probably would work a little easier for this step. So I got a flat here. Try not to damage any of the sheath on the actual cable here. Okay, so that broke free now. So now I'm going to switch over to the bent tip forceps. Just reach in there. See if I can't grab that hot glue without damaging anything and break it free, which I did. Okay. Now I can get this up there. And obviously, you just need to make accommodations so you don't strip it out of the motor. That would suck. Because then you're pretty much done. Then your motor's garbage. Well, it could be garbage. I guess it depends on how good you are at soldering. Okay, so you see that glue? Got a hold of it. Pulling it out. Got a hold of the glue. Pulling it out. And it looks like there's some heat shrink tube that's stuck on this one only. Um, probably going to go ahead and try to get that off of there for consistency's sake. Okay, got that unplugged. I'm just going to pull this heat shrink tube off. If I can get the thing off. Okay, that's good enough for me. As long as the hot glue is off of there, that's what I was concerned about. Actually, I don't mind the heat shrink at all. It's just an um, added layer of protection while I'm grabbing on. But I do want these pieces of uh, hot glue out of here because... This electronic speed control is just a little bit heavier than what we had before with a 40 amp. Um, you also notice, look how much extra slack we have now. So that's going to give us some flexibility as to where we locate this ESC. Which was, again, one of the reasons why I went through this process. Even though we shouldn't really expect to see any difference in electrical loading, the difference we're going to see is the temperature is going to be dissipated better over a larger heat sink. But also we can locate this in a better spot, hopefully. I mean, that's the theory at least, right? So once we have this in a better spot, then I'm hoping we can better utilize the airflow from the gills that I made into this plane. I don't know if you guys have paid close enough attention to notice that I have those special gills cut in there, but I do. And the gills obviously are not a stock thing, there's not much stock on this since it's a kit. 
trying to get this last little bit of hot glue kind of pulled up here but it's being a pain in the butt and I don't want to send a screwdriver through the bottom of the fuse because then it's just one more thing to fix so it looks like I might more or less be done with that good enough for now okay so now the next step is going to be to turn on the radio get the lanyard out of the way Go to system setup, yes, model select, bird time should be toward the bottom, bird of time back out, throttle cut is always set to here, scroll over, make sure throttle's not working, throttle cut's off, and it is working, now it's on, so that means we should be safe as far as the throttle channel goes, so there's still several other things that could go wrong, put our magnet back. So we need to be careful. Um, I could use one of my test packs, um, except in this case, I think I have a 60 C. Yeah, I got a good one down here, so I'll just use the good one. That way we can test it with full load for just a second. The other thing too is now I can see if this fits and um, gauge whether or not we're gonna improve the fit the way that I expect that we will because we're going to reposition stuff. So we got this 2200 3S um, that we're going to drop in here. Probably worth considering putting a false bottom in this. Um, but one of the one of the gripes I have with this um, this keeping mechanism is it uses up a lot of uh, very prime real estate just to hold the canopy thing on. I don't even know if I'd call it a canopy necessarily. It's not a canopy. It just kind of looks like a canopy. Battery hatch. See, it's got this big lug of metal on both sides, which I do not like. I'll give it a couple more twists so it tightens up at least. And the whole idea is that when you have that done then you can put this down so it's clearly not tight enough yet it is nice because it's fairly secure it does help to hold the leading edge of the wings down um, and when I say wings I mean both wings because the wings will separate if you're not careful okay so that let's just put it down like this for now first things first make sure it's in a safe spot make sure you got a hold of it Normally you'd want to take a, take your prop off, but I'm not going to do that, because I never do that. Okay, let everything initiate. Elevator. Rudder. Everything seems good. Okay, so now we're going to just test for directional travel first. Throttle cut is on currently. Let's turn it off while holding everything. Okay, it's off. That's the throttle cut. Okay, it's blowing the right direction. No braking. Okay, that makes sense. Throttle cut is on and tested. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and program this thing for throttle cut. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You could turn this off. You could try to just use the programming through the controls um, with the throttle channel. And that would be pretty easy on this one but I want to turn braking on. That would be off. This is on. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the lid. We're going to disconnect power. Then we're going to go ahead and unplug this from the receiver. Plug it into the okay, signal goes here. And then we need power on this pin which I don't know if 1S will do it, but we're going to try it. See, we got ground compared to cell 1. I don't think that's going to work. I think I need to run it on a little bit more voltage. So what we can do is we can... For sure, I've got one in here that um, that would work. 
got one that has a JST connector. And if not, we could do this and pull power that way. Oh yes, we can use this one here. This is my little test battery. And this is a 3S configuration. So if I recall, I go plus and minus. There we go. Okay, so it's programmed. Now we can go ahead and unplug it and we'll test to see if the behavior has switched to our desired behavior, which is going to be braking on. Of course, it's kind of annoying to have to unplug that thing, but what are you going to do, right? There are other ways to do it, but it entails unplugging other servos. Oh, son of a gun. Get in there. Okay, I'm just kind of getting that lined up and guiding it in because it's at the bottom of this fuselage. Okay, so now we're into the throttle channel. Just double check in our position. Lay this off to the side. Lay this off to the side. Let's just verify our settings. Looks like our settings are reduce at power cutoff. Looks like we're going to cut off volts is going to be 3.2 volts. Looks like rotation is normal. Timing is auto. We're set to LiPo as opposed to NIME. RPM's off. Good. And we're in soft. Very soft. Okay. That's good enough. Alright, so everything's right on that. So make sure your throttle cut is on. Go ahead and reestablish power to the airplane. Sounds it's kind of weird. Now you notice it didn't go beep, 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 beep. That's going to be your braking is not on. If it doesn't do the second beep, then you know braking is on. So there's throttle and braking. So throttle going the right direction and braking. Jeez. And braking. Looks like everything's working there. Throttle cut is on and tested. Very good. Okay, so now the next step is going to be to determine placing um, all the stuff in here. Boy, that one spot gets pretty warm on there. Right there. It's really warm. Not sure why it's so warm. We'll find out if it catches on fire. Okay, I disconnected the battery. Uh, receiver or transmitter's off. So now that we have the <coughs> battery disconnected we can go ahead and try to fiddle with positioning oh and if you guys see up in there there's uh, there's a bearing that's on the back side of this motor but just so you know the firewall prevents the battery from getting up to where it would touch that but you still have to be kind of careful because the wires could conceivably get into a weird situation so you want to just be mindful and be on top of it don't let the plane control you you control the plane, you know? So, we're going to go ahead and try to put those flat, and we'll see if the battery will still fit nicely. I don't like that as much. I'm going to try to go this way with it. See, and that fits nicely in the in the front half, but then I need to keep in mind that I need somewhere to put the, the electronic speed control, of course. Okay, so that's there. And of course the bundle of wires um, will need to go somewhere as well. So you can see my predisposition against this stupid mounting system here. Um, okay. So now keeping in mind this is a 
a more robust electronic speed control. My hope is it will manage uh, the BEC portion of the power circuit a lot better. So we won't have to worry about it getting so warm. But um, as you can see, it kind of sucks because it's just sitting right there next to the next to the battery. And that's not necessarily a good thing. It's not the end of the world, but I wouldn't say it's a positive trait. Especially not all this extra wire. Because um, before we had a whole lot less extra wire to deal with. But we have so much extra now that it's like, no matter what we do, I want to get my voltage alarm. This little voltage alarm, this would be one of the voltage alarms that I would use when I'm flying. And uh, obviously if we tuck this up in here, then it just makes it even tighter. I think we're going to be okay for temperature at all that, but... Okay, so I'm going to grab this and just see if I can set this in here somewhere. Okay, so... Obviously, you don't want to put this here because as those pivot, it's possible that it could become bound and either short out the battery, which would be a big problem, or just disconnect it altogether, and then you don't have your voltage alarm. So either of those two conditions would be unacceptable. So in the past, what I had done is kind of stuff this in that position there. But that position is no longer available, given the new conditions of our environment here. The good news is we have room on either side of the battery, or a slight amount of wiggle room. So it's possible we could kind of chase this into one of those spots, which would be fine by me. That would work fine. Fine. Um, dang it. You see how loud that is when it's ducked down in there? Oh, there it goes. That wasn't so quiet. Um, but you can see kind of the issue I've had with this plane was just trying to get everything to squeeze into this tight spot. It has been a bit of a bear. And uh, there's just not really a great way of doing it. But... If it was easy, anybody could do it, right? Wait, hold on. I think we want anybody to be able to do this. Okay, so you can see the only other option we could do is make it work within the headspace of this, this cover, which, I mean, it's not an impossibility. Maybe we could just take out some more material there again. But then the second problem is, like, where the heck are we going to put all the rest of this lead in here? So let's try to plug this in. Radio's on. I don't understand why it's chattering like that. It's kind of weird. Okay, everything feels fine there. I don't really particularly like that play on it, but I'm not going to disassemble all that. Try to fix it. See, because, like, look at all this freaking extra wire, guys. What are we going to do with all that crap? Um, obviously, you need to have... need to definitely have. There's elevator, rudder, that's normal by the way because when I move the ailerons that is correction factor with up elevator. That's mixed in because the spoilerons will actually spoil the lift while you're using the ailerons, um, the spoilerons as ailerons. Okay, guys, I hope I didn't shoot myself in the foot with this 50 amp ESC, because right now I don't know where the heck I'm going to fit everything. So let's try stuffing this in here. Okay, we'll stuff that down. And I'm not a big fan of having pins like that sticking up because it's not inconceivable that they could pierce through this and short something. 
Well, anyway, you guys get the idea. I'm going to play with this for a while. I'll come up with an awesome solution. Hopefully it doesn't mean putting back in the 40 amp ESC. Um, and then I will get you guys a flight video so you can see how it turns out. But for the, for the moment, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.